Today we're looking at something pretty cool. Adobe's new Project Indigo app for the iPhone. Yeah, it's generating some buzz. Right. And it seems poised to maybe change how you think about your phone's camera. You know, yeah. if you've ever wanted that pro camera feel or just better shots in tricky light. Which happens all the time with phones. Exactly. Well, Project Indigo aims to deliver that. It's about making your iPhone camera more powerful than the standard app. Let's dive in. Okay. So what's really interesting, I think, is how it tackles that smartphone look. Ah, uh, yes. We all know that look. Images that are just maybe a bit too bright, really high color saturation, sometimes heavy smoothing that makes things look plasticky. Mm -hmm. And really sharp details that don't look quite real. Exactly. Fine on a tiny screen, maybe, but blow them up and, well, they don't hold up. So Indigo goes a different way. It does. It aims for a more natural look, something closer to what you'd expect from, say, an SLR camera. Okay, more realistic. Right. It actually biases its processing to keep smoothing minimal. It's okay with leaving a bit of natural texture, maybe even a little noise, if it means the final image looks more real. So it's about realism, but also control, right? Project Indigo gives you full manual controls. That's something serious photographers often miss on phones. Like what specifically? Well, you can adjust exposure, ISO, you know, the light sensitivity focus, obviously, and white balance, too. And with white balance, isn't it more granular? It is, yeah. You get separate controls for temperature and tint, so really precise command over the color and feel of your shot, much more than most standard apps offer. So how does it achieve this better look and offer these controls? There's some tech magic happening here, I assume. There is. It leans heavily on computational photography. So instead of just one shot... It takes multiples. Exactly. It captures a burst of frames, could be up to 32 of them, and then it intelligently combines them. 32 <laughs> frames. Wow. Yeah. And what's clever is how it exposes them. It intentionally underexposes more strongly than most cameras usually do. Why do that? To protect the highlights. Precisely. Protects highlights from blowing out. Then it merges these frames, and that process drastically cuts down noise, especially in the shadows. Less graininess. Much less. Just combining, say, nine images can reduce noise by a factor of three. Your low-light photos look way cleaner. That sounds impressive, but does capturing, you know, up to 32 frames and processing them, does that slow things down or train the battery? That's a really good question. Surprisingly, it seems pretty efficient. The processing happens fast, kind of in the background. You don't really feel a big delay when you're shooting. I, and another thing that's a bit of a game changer is file types. It captures and stores photos in both SDR and HDR. Standard and high dynamic range, right? Right. Captures more light detail. And crucially, it outputs both JPEGs and RAW files, DNGs specifically. And the RAW files also get the computational benefits. This is huge for RAW shooters on mobile. You get that editing flexibility. Without needing a pro iPhone necessarily. Exactly. And the DNG files are smaller than some other raw formats. It makes high quality raw shooting more accessible. That is a leap. Okay, but what about zoom? Pinch zooming is usually where phone photos just fall apart. Right. Digital zoom is basically just cropping and scaling up, losing detail. Project Indigo tackles this with something called multi-frame super resolution. Sounds fancy. How does it work? Well, it silently captures multiple images when you zoom. It even uses your natural tiny hand movements. My shaky hands are actually useful. Sort of. It uses those slightly different viewpoints to gather more information. Then it combines them to create a single super resolution photo. So more actual detail than a single zoom shot could manage. A sharper, more detailed zoomed image. It's pretty clever. Okay, so the core tech is impressive. It also has creative modes built in. Beyond the technical stuff, there are dedicated modes. There's a night mode, obviously helpful for low light, uses longer exposures, better stabilization, and there's also a long exposure button. Ah, I've tried getting those silky water shots on my phone. It's usually just blur. Yeah, normally you need filters, like ND filters on an SLR for that, but this button lets you get those effects move in water, light painting, even right in the app. That's really cool. Opens up creative options, usually needing extra gear. For sure. So, summing this up, Project Indigo isn't just another camera app. It feels more like a, well, a reimagining of what the iPhone camera can do. It merges those manual controls people want with some really cutting-edge computational stuff. Giving you more natural-looking, higher-quality images and fixing some common phone camera frustrations. It pushes mobile photography forward, offering tools that used to be just for dedicated cameras. That blend of smart processing and user control is powerful. Really empowering you to capture things with more detail and realism just using your phone. So if you're someone who really likes to push your phone's camera, 
This app seems definitely worth checking out. With these kinds of tools becoming available, what new photographic possibilities does that open up for you?